this cross was erected by a man called Sandulf, and because his name comes first on the inscription, it's known as the Sandulf Cross, although it is dedicated to his wife, Arenbjörk. Now, Arenbjörk is not a name that's very common in the Viking world. It's more common in Sweden than Norway or Denmark. So we don't know where she came from. We don't know where she's buried, but this stone stands almost as tall as I am. And it's got a lot of different sorts of emblems on it, lots of different symbols from the men's. You can see down in the middle there, I've enlarged a little bit of it there, there are runes which says Sandulf erected this cross in memory of his wife, Arenbjörk. It's carved on both sides and there are some rather curious things on it. So this is the first known portrait of a Viking woman and it's in Andrus, not just on the Isle of Man, but the first known portrait of any woman in the Scandinavian world. This is Arenbjörk. She's on horseback, she's at the foot of the cross. You can just see there the arrows pointing to where she is. And she's sitting sideways on the horse, not side saddle as we know it, but sideways like this. It would like a chair which would be over the horse's back. And of course, the, they might well have had the Icelandic horses, which have got a very, very smooth gait. So it wouldn't, she wouldn't have been jiggled up and down. She'd have been quite comfortable. And there you can see one of the um, fjord horses with the black stripe down its mane. That's natural, it's not dyed. She would have probably worn an outfit like this. It's very familiar. And John was just mentioning that the brooches that were found recently show that women in the Isle of Man did wear brooches because before it was believed that they didn't. And this was something that was, that was purely in Scandinavia but hadn't arrived here, but now we know it did. But you can see that she is wearing several layers of clothing. There would be a linen um, chemise. Linen was very popular. This all had to be prepared and woven at home. So this was very important. And then she would have a woolen overdress and then a sort of woolen pinafore dress, which would have those brooches which would hold the straps in place. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we come to the pagan lady of Peel, so-called. 